Okay, so now I am going to get on to permutation groups because the symmetric group has lot of resemblance to permutation groups. Okay. So, basically what is permutation? If you have n identical objects, I give a tag to it as 1, 2, 3, 4. I can take object 1 and object 2 and exchange or I can take object 1 to take the object 2 position, object 2 to take the object 3 position and object 3 taking the object 1 position all possibilities are there. How many possibilities are there? How many permutations you can do with n objects? n objects, n factorial, why are you all hesitating? n factorial exchanges or permutations. So, it is a finite order group. Okay. So, it is not that if n is very large it has infinite, but countably many right. So, it is a very well tamed group to handle. So, we will now look at the permutation groups and understand the permutation groups is that. Okay. So, what do we want to understand the group structure and then we want to also see conjugacy classes and number of elements in each conjugacy class just like here there are three conjugacy class. There is one conjugacy class with three elements, one conjugacy class with two elements. You know. So, we want to see whether we could get some nice handle on combinatorics of permutations in understanding how many conjugacy classes should be there how many elements in conjugacy classes are there. Okay. So, these are questions which one could ask. So, just for specific clarity let us look at permutations of three objects okay. and then extending it to 4, 5 can be done as a you know you can try and play around and get a clarity. Okay. So, there will be 3 factorial which is 6 elements. Okay. So, this symmetric group y I call with 6 elements will be clear that there will be an isomorphism between this permutation group and this abstract group. Okay. So, we will see that this abstract group with 2 generators a and b will have some isomorphism to the permutation of 3 objects we will see that that is why it is being termed as symmetric. Okay. So, first of all how to write these group elements in the permutation of 3 objects. Okay. So, you start with saying that object 1, object 2, object 3 does not permute at all. Okay. So, it remains as 1, 2 and 3 this is the initial configuration this is the final configuration. This I will call it as pi 1 actually it is like a identity element in the set okay. no change no permutation. The second one could be 1 goes 1 changes to the second position the second one goes to the first position and the 3 is not touched. Okay. This is one possibility and so on we can start listing everything what is the other one you can have pi 3 with 1, 2, 3 let us say 1 goes to 3, 2 is not touched this is one possibility you can have pi 4. 2 can go to 3, 3 can go to 2 and 1 is not touched. The beauty of these elements are if you do pi 2 again 
you will get back identity right 1 goes to 2 2 will go to 1 so 1 will go to 1 how do we do that okay so let me also explain in this notation how to write inverse so if you want to do pi 1 into pi 1 i will do it as 1 2 3 sorry pi 2 and pi 1 is trivial so there is no point in doing this pi 2 into pi 2 is one more thing which i want to notice for you is that the ordering is unimportant I could have called this if suppose I can interchange these columns it does not really matter. So, this is equivalent to both are same ok. Idea is that 2 goes to 1, 1 goes to 2 is important. I can interchange the columns. I can just take the second column, put it as first column, first column as second column. The element is the same. What is the operation is 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1. So, you see that 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1 ok. So, no change. So, now we will exploit this property to do multiplications. So, I want to do pi 2 and then I want to do pi 2 ok. So, here usually when I want to do it when I multiply fractions I make sure that I can cancel denominator with a numerator. So, let us write it in this form and then figure out what is the equivalent. So, 2 1 3 will go to 1 2 3. So, this is the multiplication procedure. When you do that, you get so you write the initial and the final, and this is what I call it as pi 1, which is the identity element. Okay. So, the multiplication in this case is little you know different elements are written differently. I say the initial three objects, this is the permuted three objects, no permutation I call that as an identity element. One permutation between object 1 and object 2 is what I have written here. This element whether I call the first column, second column, third column in whichever order does not matter, it depends on these elements as an entity you can swap whichever way you want ok is that clear that is what I have done here and this is useful when I want to do the multiplication I will take this final state to be the initial state and then see how it changes finally the initial state goes into this final state which is nothing but the identity. So, what does this tell us? Phi 2 inverse phi 2 squared is identity. So, order 2 group phi 2 inverse is phi 2. Hmm? Is that clear? So, this is what you see. Can you also tell me how to write the inverse? Let us look at some more elements. There should be actually 3 factorial elements, right? 6 elements. So, you will have a pi phi and a pi 6. So, we can write that. Okay. So, pi 2, pi 3. So, I probably have done on the slide differently, but let me correct it later. But what is this going to be? 1, 2, 3, 1 can go to 2, 2 can go to 3, 3 can go to this is one possibility cyclic permutation. Other one is 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 2, 
टू टू गोज टू वन एम आई राइट ए साइक्लिक परमिटेशन वन विल गो टू थ्री देन थ्री विल गो टू 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 विल गो टू वन सो दिस आर वेस ऑफ प्लेइंग अराउंड ऑल द सिक्स एलिमेंट्स एंड आई हेव शोन दिस हियर ऑन द स्लाइड so i i think i have followed a different notation here but you understand what i'm saying pi 1 is an identity element pi 2 exchanges 1 and 2 that is also consistent with the what i did pi 3 is 2 and 3 and pi 4 is 1 and 3 so the pi 3 and pi 4 has to be exchanged pi 5 is 1 becomes 2 2 becomes 3 3 becomes 1 is that okay is that clear and pi 6 is the acyclic one 1 becomes 3 3 becomes 2 2 becomes 1 okay i don't think any other permutations are allowed you know this very well so i thought let me take the three objects and explain it okay i also try to stress the fact that exchanging the columns should not change the elements so if you exchange the columns both are actually the same element okay so this i have tried to stress here that you could exchange the second column and the first column you can even exchange all the columns in any combination but the element will be the same okay it's not only true for phi pi phi any element actually just try to show that so product operation also i've explained now i put it here explicitly pi 2 you can multiply pi 2 with the pi phi as i said before you do that make sure that the resulting state of pi 2 becomes the initial state and you shuffle the column and write the final state there okay and then see what that element is and you will find that please check it out pi 2 pi 5 will be pi 4 and pi 5 pi 2 will be pi 3 okay so please check this out i think my pi 4 which i wrote on the board is pi 3 there and vice versa but you can check it out okay this also i've stressed already pi 2 is order 2 element and similarly you can show that any two particle exchange two object exchange alone these two are involving all the three objects one goes to two two goes to three three goes to one right whereas here if you see it is only uh, either two and three are getting exchanged one is untouched so any two particle exchange so pi 2 pi 3 pi 4 are only involving only two objects they will always be order to element right if you do it again you will get back to the same position right so they are order to elements and then you come to pi 6 and pi 5 relation i leave it you to check pi 6 squared can somebody do it let's do it maybe so pi pi 6 is what this one right so i want to write pi 6 squared is that right are you all with me is just that here i called pi 3 and pi 4 maybe you can change this to pi 4 and pi 3 just to be in thinking with the powerpoint so this is what we get 
okay, pi 6 square turns out to be pi 5. Okay. And similarly, you can show, you can check the other one also, what is pi phi square. Okay. So, you can check this out, pi phi square will be pi phi inverse, this also, how do you find an inverse? What is an inverse? inverse is if you undo the process you have to get identity element right. So, whenever I want to look at inverse suppose I want to look at the inverse what I will do is I will look at here and write the inverse. So, 1 goes to 3 1 goes to 3 reverse 3 goes to 2 3 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 1. So, this will be my inverse and what is that element? This I am not checked, but please check it, but I am writing what will be the inverse. Whenever you want to look at the inverse, you do the reverse process. When I write the forward element, I say that 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1. When I want to find the inverse, 1 will go to 3, 2 will go to 1, 3 will go to 2, because when you multiply these 2, you will get it to be an identity. Is that clear? Okay. So, this is one way of writing the inverse and checking this out. So, a couple of things will be now really clear to you that you find pi 6 squared to be pi phi and also you have pi phi cube is identity. Okay. Similarly, you can also show pi 6 cube is identity. Now, you can see an isomorphism. What is the isomorphism? Isomorphism between the abstract symmetric group with generator A and B and this one. So, you have a G 1 you have a G 2 pi 1 is identity Is it an isomorphism? It should be an isomorphism. Order of the two groups are same, right? Homomorphism will come only when the orders are different. Huh? B is missing? Yeah, B should also be. Thank you. Totally six elements. Okay, so, I will leave it you to find which one is A, which one is B, which one is A B, which one is A B squared. Please check it out. Then you have an isomorphism between two different looking definitions. I am just clarifying how to see isomorphism. Okay. So, the phi map will be such that phi of E is E phi of probably a is pi 2 and so on and so on. So, figure this out. Okay. So, that is isomorphisms, now you can generalize permutation groups, permutation of n objects there will be n factorial elements. And then you say that such a permutation of n objects is called symmetric group of degree n. n is for the number of objects, nothing to do with the order of the group, order of the group is n factor. And subgroups 
will all have some properties. Okay. So, these subgroups are what they call it as a permutation group. The symmetric group is also the trivial subgroup, it is also called as a permutation. Identity element is a trivial subgroup, total group is a sub is also a trivial subgroup, non trivial subgroups will also be some kind of what they call it as a permutation group. The reason why we are stressing on permutation group is whenever in the solid state crystallography or something you see a finite group symmetry, you can always show that there is an isomorphism to a subgroup of the symmetry. Okay. So, that is why we are trying to stress on understanding the universal group which is a symmetry group. If we understand that then we know how to do subgroups there, how to understand conjugacy class and this may be useful. Suppose, I give you a finite group of order 6 for example, in this case when I gave g 1 to be this then you can see that there is some kind of an isomorphism to the symmetric group of degree 3. right? So, the same thing can be done for other finite groups by using this invoking Cayley's theorem. Yeah. This is the way the mathematicians have defined and we just want to keep it as a some symmetry transformations, some permutations is what they call it. Okay. Some books do say them to be permutation group also, but permutation group the subgroups of them are technically what they call it as permutation groups, but uh, you can call this symmetric group also as a permutation group in that sense of n of x. Yeah. Yes, tell me what is the one good. It has single generator here also because pi 6 squared is pi phi you can still generate with E pi phi and pi phi squared the cyclic group of order 3. I am giving you an example it looks like different element, but pi phi can be generated from phi 6 or vice versa. So, pi 6 and pi phi are not independent elements, they are the elements of the set. A subgroup, subgroup of the symmetric group of degree 3. So, let me write it. be isomorphic to C 3. So, that is what Cayley's theorem says any finite group can be seen to be isomorphic to subgroups of symmetric groups. I am just giving you an example is that okay? you can find other examples also. So, cyclic group is something which we have been studying. So, it is trivially you can find. Okay. So, now I just want to straighten out one more notation which is many books follow it and it is much more you know clearer. This becomes more elaborate if I have to write n objects in such a complicated fashion. Instead, they use something called as a permutation cycles. Okay. So, let me explain what that permutation cycles in these examples and then we will 
get to the aim is given a symmetric group of degree n it has n factorial elements that n factorial elements I should be able to write it as a disjoint union of conjugacy classes and I should also be able to determine in how many elements are then there in each conjugacy class. Okay. So, this example you can keep it at your back of your mind that it has three conjugacy class, one conjugacy class has identity, other conjugacy class has three elements, third conjugacy class had two elements. How do we understand that in a combinatorial way? Okay. So, this is what is a you can do it by brute force suppose I say do it for 5 objects I am sure tomorrow 10 people can form 3 groups and come back tomorrow and tell me how many classes are there how many. But it will be interesting that without doing anything can you come up that when you have permutation of 3 objects which is isomorphic to that group which shares the same multiplication table right. I want to say that by closing my eyes that there are 3 conjugacy class and identity of course, is conjugacy class in every group. So, we do not need to worry the other 2 non trivial conjugacy class why 1 has 3, 1 has 2 all these kinds why cannot it have 4 conjugacy class why cannot it you know you can ask various questions and you should be able to give a nice way of understanding that in an alg algorithm way. Okay, so, that is why the cycle structure will play a very important. Okay. So, just bear with me for some more notations, but it is I, I will give you a simple example, so that it is clear in your mind. So, that any arbitrary n you can do it even though it becomes abstract for arbitrary n you understand always go back to this simple example. That is why I have tried to keep this non trivial example in the back of my mind. Okay.